After reviewing um, both the written description that was supplied by the applicant um, and listening to the discussion at the uh, workshop, um, I determined that the proposed uh, cannabis growth facility falls under the existing town definition of agriculture as found in our zoning ordinance, which reads, in part, all methods of production and management of crops and vegetation, including but not limited to tillage, fertilization, pest control, harvesting, and marketing. This is obviously a broad general definition, and frankly, I don't see how it could be interpreted to not allow the growing and harvesting of any otherwise legal crop or plant, whether outdoors or in a controlled environment. Uh, clearly, this is based on our current rules and regulations. Um, if the mayor and council and, and Sharon can certainly jump in and help me if I misstate anything, but certainly if you so choose going forward, we could um, further define this specific use, um, the specific type of agriculture, and either reaffirm it as an outright permitted use uh, or declare it to, be, uh, to require a special exception or a prohibited use um, in the various zoning districts throughout the town. Uh, we can also prescribe whatever supplemental standards the council thinks uh, might be appropriate for that particular use. Um, and I think it's worth noting that, uh, you know, due to all the, the issues surrounding this particular use, just like any other land use, uh, for example, a pharmacy, um, there are legitimate operations and criminal operations of such uses possible. Hopefully it goes without saying that the zoning ordinance only addresses legitimate operations of such uses. And frankly, if someone acts otherwise, they probably have much bigger concerns than zoning compliance to worry about. Uh, but that's how we got from the end of last meeting to where I ended up Friday when I sent the letter um, to the uh, attorney for representing the CBD wells. Uh, go ahead and entertain any questions. The process from this point forward, you've notified the applicant of the, your determination mm -hmm. that it falls under the definition of agriculture and it is a permitted use in that zone and that location. So the, the letters, and we have gotten letters in opposition in this use, have all been suggesting that the council votes against this. Um, and I just wanted clarification for the public about how this process has transpired and what happens next. In terms of going forward, it uh, largely depends on exactly what is proposed in terms of how they use the building. If there's any proposal to expand the footprint, then there will be a site plan review required, and depending on how much disturbed area, that will determine whether it's strictly an administrative review or requires planning commission review. But that's just the layout, uh, perhaps a little bit of the architecture, design, that sort of thing. It doesn't get into the legitimacy of the use. Um, beyond that, um, really the only town review and approval that will be necessary will be whatever the building department requires in the form of either building permits or occupancy permits. Uh, at least to my knowledge, that's the only requirement going forward. Obviously they have uh, the state license that they have to obtain. I don't know, perhaps Sharon knows if there is any opportunity for public comment in that process. I'm not familiar with that particular part. You mentioned we have gotten quite a few letters in opposition and uh, but I should add that uh, I have spoken to any number of folks in the community most of whom um, are if they're not supportive of this use uh, they're at least um, they're not against it no. but we have had some very thought-provoking um, well-written letters of opposition, and some from the the most recent from the, I believe, the head of the, the uh, health department. Um, and I don't want to oversimplify the, the tenor of those, of the opposition, but my reading of it, it comes down to, to two or three central 
central issues um, by approving the Black and Decker building for growing medical marijuana. The local officials are in effect creating a double standard or the perception of the double standard that we are against drug abuse in the county and yet we're allowing marijuana to be grown legally within the town. By doing that, the second thing is we're undermining local law enforcement's ability to enforce the laws and to, to battle um, the crime of illegal drugs in the county. And I guess in a sort of umbrella opposition is this is the wrong kind of jobs or the wrong perception of, of the kind of industry that we want in our small town. Those are all very difficult questions to, to uh, answer. Um, I have been reading quite a bit on the use of miracle, um, medical marijuana, uh, mainly about a gentleman, I'll probably mispronounce his name, uh, it's Raphael Meshulam. He's the uh, Israeli scientist who, back in the 60s, discovered the uh, components of marijuana, the cannabinoids and the THC, and has been experimenting at Hebrew University for the last 45 or so years on its medical application. Um, I would encourage anyone to, to Google him and read some of the things he has written, some of the work he's doing. Um, he is uh, way out in front of uh, the research that this that, that uh, the United States is currently doing, mainly because marijuana is still considered a Schedule One drug, which means it's uh, it has no medical value. I think that's about to change. But his research points to uh, applications in all sorts of uh, areas: Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, Tourette's. Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, I mean the list goes on and on. The thing that drew me to him obviously was his expertise, but the other thing that really attracted me was he is adamant in thinking that marijuana should not be legalized for recreational use. And he says so because it he, he views it used irresponsibly as a dangerous drug, especially for its negative effect on developing brains. So young people uh, are at risk when using marijuana. The thing that we need to do as a society, in my view, is be able to differentiate between the value something can give to us as a community and separate that, if indeed you can, from the risks involved. And the product that we're talking about being grown in the Black & Decker building is not the product that the Sheriff's Department and Eastern Police Department is battling on the streets. It's a different animal altogether, and we need to be able to differentiate between the two. Far too many of us either have a a personal, have personal knowledge or knowledge of family or friends whose lives have been very adversely affected by addiction. But an equal number of us have friends and family, personal experiences of people that have undergone immense suffering because of the diseases that this drug could potentially help alleviate. And if you read some of the research that's going on, especially overseas, eliminate it altogether. So some of the some of the accusations in the letters were that by doing this that we're de facto allowing, if not inferring support for an illicit drug culture in this county. I thoroughly reject that. Um, I think personally that I am able to draw a distinction between what we are supporting and what is happening in the illegal use of drugs in this county. And that's where I stand. And I'm 
I'm thankful Lynn came before us, and I fully support his determination of this as a community abuse. And I think this is pertinent to the American Academy of Pediatrics. Is this, their position is similar to ours. They're opposed to legalization for recreational use. On the other hand, they recognize that there are a serious situation with children that they need the benefit of this, and they're, they're, they recommend that, for example, rates research development should be conducted on pharmaceutical cannabinoids. The AAP recommends changing marijuana from DEA Schedule 1 to DEA Schedule 2 to facilitate this research. As the federal and state governments should establish robust health surveillance regarding the impact of marijuana, particularly on kid, children, and adolescents, and it, and it goes on through this, but they're, they're all recognizing that there's potential medical things that they, they're all saying we need to be doing this. And I think that's consistent with this application here is we're talking medicinal marijuana. We're not talking, that, as you say, the, the stuff that they're making is not the stuff the kids get on the street, street more than one. And, and, and I was convinced that the, uh, that the uh, security plan they had was uh, significantly more than I probably hope they would ever expect to use. So I, I, I feel pretty strongly about that. Okay. Uh, I think Mr. Ford uh, very well characterized uh, the, uh, the the tenor of the of the opposition that, that we received um, in, and over the comments. Um, and I, I think I, I, I agree with him entirely. If, Mr. Ford, you were very articulate in, in, in your rationale. Uh, like Mr. Rangel, I, I agree that, uh, that really there, there, there is not a concern about the product from this reaching the black market here or elsewhere. Uh, for market reasons, for security reasons, they're, 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 those, those safeguards, um, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm too unsatisfied with, with them. Um, just as one as one closing thought, uh, I would um, well. I, 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 I do want to emphasize uh, one, of, one of your your final notes, which is uh, that uh, retail use uh, a dispensary is clearly not uh, permitted in this decision, uh, and uh, and really couldn't be under the under the current zoning. Uh, that's uh, that's a completely different animal, uh, and I I would uh, suggest that we. Uh, that we proactively make a legislative decision that would that would guide that uh, should we uh, should we be confronted with it down the road. And that would start with the planning commission yeah. taking a look at that use and making a recommendation whether it was first of all whether it was appropriate or not within the town at this time, and if so, where. I mean, I think what you all said was um, pretty important with my beliefs, especially John, I think I could agree with Pete. I think you said it, stated it very well. You know, as a parent, I've got, excuse me, three young kids who are coming up that I'll be, you know, involved and worried. Yeah, they could become teenagers and get involved, um, you know, potentially with friends that could, you know, come in contact with drugs. Of course, I'm always worried about that as a parent. But this is a facility, I don't think, I don't draw... Um, you know, I think they're two separate entities. I think the Grand facility, this is a separate product. I don't feel it's something that the community needs to worry about. It's not something that the community is going to come in contact with. I don't think it's something that the community is really going to have to know because when they go by the building, um, it's something that's going to be restricted. It's going to be regulated. It's going to be under tight security. And the product is going to go from the town to dispensary. It's not going to be dis distributed within the town. It's not going to come in contact with our families. And it's not something that um, I think the people, you know, it's not sweet mostly that people are going to be wanting. Um, I mean, that's my opinion. And I understand the benefit. I understand the worries that families are as a need, but I do see the benefit of product as to the population. And just to say, I know that a lot of people come to me in support of it, and I have encouraged them to write letters that we've been receiving letters against it that would be nice to hear the voices of those that are for it to have them. So I've encouraged them, hopefully, we'll start receiving some of those 